This is the last segment of Citizens Forum for March 13th, 2019. And Jack and I are going to talk about a couple of subjects that have been on our minds this last week or two. And Jack, why don't you tell me what you're uh, wondering about with vaccines and the media, and in particular, the Times Colonist editorial. Yeah. So to me, the, the issue with vaccines is this, and probably the same for everybody. Um, children's health and everybody's health. Uh, if, to me, if vaccines are safe and effective, then I am all for them. Um, so, but I am concerned about the way the media is presenting the information. It's almost, I get the feeling like they're trying to stampede us into something. And what they seem to be shooting for is mandatory vaccination. So the Times colonists ran an editorial. I don't want to pick on the Times colonists because many others are worse, including Global and, uh, and, and CFAX. But it says, just, vac just vaccinate the children. This was from a couple of weeks ago. And it says, parents who refuse to vaccinate their children are endangering other people's children. The Times colonists, I don't think the Times colonists, the owners of the Times colonists care about children's health for one second. Uh, Times Colonist is owned by a company called Glacier. Glacier is very tied into the oil industry, the natural gas industry, fracking, and the mining industry. These are toxic industries, and we've got to face that fact. So for this newspaper to say that pe parents who refuse to vaccinate their children are endangering other people's children, when this company is tied into industries that are really endangering other people's children, I think is a little bit much. Yeah, my wife and I watched uh, Vaxxed last night, which, by the way, is on, available on Hoopla. It's been pulled from Amazon. You can no longer order the uh, video Vaxxed from Amazon. It's not available. But it is available on Hoopla Digital, which if you have a Victoria uh, library card, you can watch what it for it free. Say? Well, it talks about... Uh, the, uh, the main problems seem to be with uh, triple vaccines, and they give the uh, example. The thing, that, the thing that, I, that really spoke to me about that was that uh, SmithKline-Glaxo evidently had a triple vaccine for the MMR vaccine, it's called, in uh, Canada in 1987, and it was pulled because it was causing meningitis. And they had already applied to have it approved in the UK, and it was, and it was approved uh, shortly after that because it was causing meningitis. So then they took it to Brazil and it caused a, an outbreak of meningitis there. To me, that just says that we're guinea pigs, we're, we're lab rats, and that's what I don't like. So I'll take charge of my own life, thank you. And I, I'm not going to listen to people who are trying to guilt me into some kind of societal thing just because they think it's right to have vaccines. I think that everybody should do their own diligence and decide whether or not they want to vacc vaccinate their children. But the point of the video was that the CDC has presented some faulty research and that uh, their timetable for vaccines is not uh, acceptable because of, of the risk. And it really is happening. I mean, it's, it's thousands and thousands of people who have children who are suffering from this. So I'd have to say, though, that you have to make your own, you have to do your own research and your own due diligence because it's different for every person. And uh, what about Merck the, or the graph that yeah. of vaccines? So uh, I hope Will is going to show. Gonna yeah, we're going to show this on screen. Basically, this shows uh, a number of the diseases that we vaccinate for. And what it shows in every case, uh, whooping cough, uh, measles, polio, and, and the rest, uh, is that over, starting in 1880, these rates were very high and they went down steadily because of better public health and other reasons. There, there were no vaccines and everything else, but the rates for all these diseases were going down steadily. When the vaccine was introduced, there was no change. It kept going down at exactly the same rate. I first saw this graph in a medical school textbook about 40 years ago, and it surprised me at the time. Why not? Because um, it showed that what I had been told about vaccines wasn't correct. We have to wrap it up. You want to say anything about uh, any other topics, or just finish up? Yeah, about, I'm sorry. I'll, the, I'll like just the finish CDC in 30 or? seconds. Okay. Uh, Merck, uh, the company that is the number one maker of the MMR vaccine, is being sued by two of its own scientists. This case has been going on for 10 years. It's never wow. in the media. 
they're sued because the scientists say they faked the results showing how effective it was. In order to sell to the U.S. government, it had to be this effective. It wasn't, so they just faked the research to make it that effective. And that's what we're up against. Now, we have to be told this so we can make intelligent decisions. That's my concern about the media. Thank you. I ran across uh, an article on the web. It's called Deep Adaptation, a Map for Navigating Climate Tragedy. It was published last year, July 27th, 2018, by Professor Jem Bendel, who's a, a, a teacher at the University of Cumbria in the UK. Now this, this paper is a meta, it's a meta study, so it, it gathers data from several studies, and I'd just like to read the abstract part. The purpose of this conceptual paper is to provide readers with an opportunity to reassess their work and life in the face of an inevitable near-term social collapse due to climate change. The approach of this paper is to analyze recent studies on climate change and its implication for our ecosystems, economies, and societies as provided by academic journals and publications direct from research institutes. That synthesis leads to a conclusion that there will be near-term collapse in society with serious ramifications for the lives of readers. The paper reviews some of the reasons why collapse denial may exist, in particular in the professions of sustainability research and practice, therefore leading to these arguments having been absent from these fields until now. So I'll put the the uh, link so you can go to this professor's site and read this if you so I, I find that it's not really very scary it's just trying to be real with with what's going on and the solution is to re is to is to become more of a community at the very local level because that's where we're going to have to act and I, it, it again it just it gets me to the point where I don't want to listen to any politicians anymore because they're not talking about things like this this is just totally in denial about what's going on so how do you how do you feel like that about that because I mean we we can't just keep talking about this stuff without doing anything right? Yeah, it, to me it's just amazing to watch our, us do this to ourselves. You know, uh, we're we're destroying the future and we can't seem to stop. I I I'm not sure why. <laughs> I'm not sure either. I <clears throat> but the thing is, is that we need to look at at some of these things that are real because if we had a societal collapse right here in Victoria. I'm sure that we would be okay simply because they were okay when the Soviet Union collapsed in Havana and they just everybody uh, ramped up their gardens and made it through. But I'm not so sure about other places. I mean, there are, there are big cities where, I mean, what would you do? How can you have a, a Vancouver? Can you imagine Vancouver being a garden city? <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, I wish we were preparing for this. You know, and, and well, I think that's one of the, the, uh, the things that we have to get right now is that we can't just keep talking and talking about things. We've got to do stuff it, it just for, but it doesn't, it's not fighting against something that's inevitable. I, that's, what, that's the thing that I, I really wonder about. I mean, I, I have to, uh, I, we talked about uh, African Queen where some, all of a sudden reality is completely different from what we're used to and coping with that involves not so much trying to regain the reality that was like you, you know we see all these politicians are trying to get us to still use gasoline and oil and I mean it, that's not that's the way things were but that's not where we're headed and I just I wonder how how many of us can stand this much of a shock if this is where we're really headed for. Yeah. Well, that's going to be interesting to find out. Yeah, interesting times coming. Well I want to talk about this on the show. I want to talk about, I want to go over some more of this paper and I, want to, I would like to have some guests on the show to talk about this because I think we can, as individuals, we can shift our focus to how we are going to handle this as a community instead of trying to figure out you know, what, <laughs> what went wrong or other things. What's the name of the paper? Again? The name of the paper is Deep Adaptation, a Map for Navigating Climate, climate Tragedy. tragedy. Yeah. And it's not, it's not original research, it's a meta study, so it's a study of studies. Yeah. So anyway, that, that's where we're going. Thank you for watching this last segment of Citizens Forum and join us in two weeks.